Oh man, this is an emergency update because Bitcoin has climbed back above $27,000 after a debt ceiling has been agreed by Biden and his administration. In this video, we're going to get into the details. There's a few things you need to be worried about that we need to cover off as well. Smash up likes, don't forget to subscribe. Guys, we've finally come to an agreement in principle between the White House and Republicans. Yes, it says here they've reached a tentative deal to avoid the US default. Now, of course, this is not a surprise, right? Nobody is surprised that they've raised the debt ceiling, but we're going to go into whether this could be positive for Bitcoin, negative for Bitcoin, and what could happen from here on out. But the good thing so far for markets is that this uncertainty that we've had is really starting to come to an end. Now, this will have to go for vote on Wednesday. So do expect a little bit of uncertainty on Tuesday, particularly and Wednesday. So Monday is closed for Memorial Day in the US, so markets will be um, quiet. But then on Tuesday and Wednesday, and particularly Wednesday, this will go to vote in the House. So it's important that this goes through. Otherwise, markets will get jittery again. Now, the other thing to note historically is that historically, whenever the debt ceiling has been raised, risk of asset, risk on assets, sorry, start to fall. So there is some risk that Bitcoin could fall here. But in my opinion, I feel like that may not be the case. I feel like the worst was already priced in, and now the market can have a slight positive move post this debt ceiling move. Because if you think about the actual mechanics of what's going on, if you just raise the spending cap on your credit card, it just means you're going to introduce more liquidity in the market when you go to spend more money. Money. And that liquidity is good for Bitcoin. Remember, Bitcoin is, co is correlated to global liquidity. The more global liquidity there is in the market, the more that ultimately flows into Bitcoin as a percentage as people put some into a higher risk place such as Bitcoin. OK, so we're seeing Bitcoin moving nicely here from a technical perspective. You can see we did bounce, of course, of our very important 26.2 level. Who says that technical analysis don't work? Right. We called this from the whole time. We didn't have any panic. We knew there was support here at 26.2. We knew there was 25 as well. But so far, we've managed to avoid 25. Now, remember what I said. We need to get above 27.5. I feel nervous until we get above where my cursor is right now. See this one, two, three peaks here? Because this still feels like we're just kind of hanging in no man's land. And I think that's why I'm a little bit nervous about Tuesday, Wednesday, because we could still, until we kind of get back above some of these higher levels, we could still rotate back to the downside to retwist, retest 26.2. So don't think you're out of the woods just yet. These politicians like to play games up to the final hour. So they're going to let it vote till Wednesday. We've got to keep an eye on that very, very closely. Now, the other thing to note is we know that this was a very, very important weekly close. Why is it an important weekly close that we've got? Let me show you. This is the weekly candle, right? We've just had three negative weeks red to the downside. We've just opened up now a positive weekly candle. This is going to close in 14 hours today, okay? 14 hours, this candle will close. But why is it significant? The reason is if I bring out my 200 moving average, which is a very important moving average, which generally holds us support, we do not want to lose that, okay? Every time here, you see, we get a nice bounce. We get a nice bounce. We do not want to be losing this level. And we, you can see, we are just wicked below it during the week. The level sits exactly, let me tell you the exact level of this moving average, at 26,700. So we're above it right now at 27,000. We do not want to be closing uh, below it. And that's good that we're getting a little bit of a bounce here. And guys, if you're not in our free Telegram group, what are you waiting for? You get all the updates, you get news flashes, you get polls, you get chart patterns, you get insights. Make sure you're involved in there. Also, guys, definitely check out the link to Bybit, ejars.uk forward slash Bybit and trade with us, right? You get some amazing bonuses, which I've negotiated with the Bybit team. That is affiliate link, which helps me support the channel, but it still gives you the best deal that there is out there on the market. So definitely go check it out. Links in the description. Have a read of what you get access to and uh, definitely take advantage of that. If you look at the level we had of 26.2, look at how we're climbing off of this level. Nice set of green candles here, bouncing off this key level. If you look at the symmetrical triangle pattern, again, still got some work to do, right? Got to get above the apex of a triangle to really nullify the downward effects of this type of symmetrical triangle. The other pattern we were looking at on the weekly chart was a nice big cup and handle pattern that was forming, right? And if you look at this cup and handle pattern, it shares a price target of 45, which sounds crazy for now, but again, look at this. If I just drop that down to the daily, we're maintaining the handle part of our cup and handle. Had we have broken down from here, we wouldn't have. So look how perfectly it's bouncing from this channel as well. Another way to look at it is the head and shoulders pattern we were falling down from. Okay, so again, look at this head and shoulders breaking down. And again, we've got to get above that neckline. And the neckline sits at 28,000. Okay, so still some work to do here to the upside. 
The other reason I'm feeling a little bit positive about this market is the market's already gone ahead and priced in the worst. Right. They went ahead. They priced in, uh, you know, that the debt ceiling would struggle. They priced in that this there's a huge U-turn now in the interest rate hike. So now the all this time, guys, since the last FOMC meeting, every time we've made a video, we said that the market were pricing in because this was at least 90 percent, 80 percent that the market was going to do no rate hike at the next meeting. Now, the majority of the market, 64 percent of the market are saying, hang on a second, we're going to get 25 basis points. OK, so the market is priced that in. And yet we're still sitting at twenty seven thousand. This is really strong price action. I don't think people are understanding. We've just priced in an extra rate hike, yet Bitcoin's still sitting at 27,000. And that's a positive sign. Okay, so let's advance with caution. We know there's Wednesday still. It's got to get clear, right? There's going to be more antics leading up to Wednesday, but that's fine. If we get a dip, more buy opportunity for me. I'm not going to be panicked whatsoever at that point. Then we know that the market's expecting 25 basis points. And then after that 25 basis points, half of the market is saying we'll stop there. OK, and then you're kind of split. You've got 20 percent of the market saying we were never going to do one more in the first place. And then 27 percent of the market saying we'll get another one thereafter. So we're not out of the woods just yet with this rate hike cycle next week or this upcoming week, apart from Memorial Day on Monday. On Wednesday, you've got a few Fed officials speaking. You've got Fed Bowman and Fed Jefferson. Uh, then later in the week on Thursday, you get the ADP. Oh, sorry, on Wednesday as well, you get the jolts figure. So that's really important to look out for the jolts figure, uh, which is your number of jobs openings. Then on Thursday, you get the ADP. GDP private jobs figure and on Friday we're going to get the much important non-farm payrolls remember non-farm payrolls are what Jerome Powell looks at Jerome Powell's looking at two things right now he's looking at the labor market as he has been and he's looking at inflation if those numbers come in sensibly we have a chance of a pause if they don't come in sensibly like we saw inflation last week uh, PCE inflation a couple of days ago come in a little bit hot that is why markets are pricing in that we're gonna have another rate hike. Now, the other chart that we must, must, must pay attention to coming into this week is this dollar index week. Remember, this is the chart that's causing the pain. As people become more and more nervous in the market, they're, they're more uncertain, this rises because this shows that people are going risk off, which is not good for Bitcoin. Now, if we can sign this debt ceiling off, if we can get this agreed, if the market has decided that 25 base points is the way we're going, then finally, we can start putting more certainty back in the market, which could see some movements back in risk on plays, which is good for Bitcoin. So what we want to see here is we want to see this come back into its EMA ribbon and ideally go back below the daily EMA ribbon. If we zoom up to the weekly chart, we want to see this harshly rejected, guys. This closed above its weekly EMA ribbon. This is not good. But remember, this doesn't price in what just happened over the weekend because the dollar index weekly candlestick closes on a Friday. OK, so very important that we on I think it's going to open up on Tuesday, this candle now, because Monday's off when this candle opens up. We need to see this start moving to the downside. I do not want the dollar index above its weekly EMA ribbon because then it's going to form a W pattern. We do not want it to form this W pattern and start working back to high levels. That's going to that's going to spell a painful period for Bitcoin. But if we can start moving to more certainty, if the debt ceiling can get passed by Wednesday, as they're promising, then we can start rejecting it to the downside, moving it back down for another leg. And that can signal good sign, thumbs up for risk on assets such as Bitcoin. So guys, it's moving in a positive direction. This is a good sign. Bitcoin at 27,000. Debt ceiling issues starting to get resolved. That's good. But proceed with caution. These politicians play games. They're still not signed on paper. Until it's signed on paper, we don't know where we're sat just yet, but it's good. We're moving in the right direction, and that's a positive sign. Guys, if you appreciate these quick emergency updates on Bitcoin, smash all the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy your Sunday wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.